to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ the lord and savior jesus christ said i am the way the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. We welcome you today to our study of Jesus as the way of salvation. Uh, our programs are brought to you by members of the Churches of Christ in your area. They would love for you to stop by and visit their Bible study. If you've got a Bible question or you'd like to sit down and study the Word of God, these Christians would love to visit with you anytime. Please look them up in your local area and visit their assembly if you can. And as always, we'd like to invite you to visit our website, thegospelofchrist.com. There's a, a host of Bible study material there that you can access if you'd like to have a copy of today's lesson on DVD or CD. We make all of our lessons available free of charge. You can visit our website and request free media there or you can contact us at the information given at the end of our program. You know in the world we live in today there seem to be in a lot of people's minds a variety of different ways that you can be saved. Some would say that you can be saved under the Hindu religion or by being a Buddhist. Others would say that you could be saved by Allah or Muhammad under Islam, whether it be Judaism, whether it be some type of spiritualism today or something like that. There's just a whole host of different religions and people claim that all these and all the followers of and, and leaders of can save you. Well friend, is that true? Not according to Jesus. Jesus clearly taught us. We think today on the subject of salvation, Jesus was emphatic that He is the only way. Listen to it again. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Jesus did not propagate this idea that you can be saved under the variety of religions that exist. He clearly taught, unless you come through Him, you cannot be saved. He was very single-minded. He was very uh, restricted in that view because that's the only plan God has made. And so, friend, let's think about these three things Jesus said. I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I am the life. And let's consider the importance of each of those statements. Today, as we think about salvation, let's realize Jesus Christ is the only way to be saved. There are not a multitude of paths. There are not a multitude of religions that can save you. Uh, Buddhism and Hindu cannot save you. Muhammad cannot save you. Uh, Confucius cannot save you. Uh, what will save you? Jesus is the only way to be saved. Listen to Acts chapter 4 verse number 12. The Apostle Peter said, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which you must be saved. Only the person and the power of Jesus can save man from sin. Remember, you'll call His name Jesus. Why? He'll save His people from their sins. Uh, Luke chapter 19 verse 10, Jesus came to seek and to save that which is lost. I remember the words of 1 John 2 verse 1 and 2. He is the propitiation for our sins, not for ours alone, but for the sins of the whole world. Now there's no doubt that people are going to claim that you can be saved by Muhammad and Islam. They're going to be say, say that you can be saved by, by Gandhi and living a life of purity or by Confucius or by going back to Judaism and living under the old law. Friend, you don't find that to be true, and you sure don't find that in the Scriptures. Jesus Christ 
if I'm going to go to heaven, if I'm going to one day live with the Father, the creator of all people, the only path that I can get to God on is Jesus Christ. It is restricted, it is narrow, and Jesus clearly taught that Himself. And so, you know, when we think about Jesus as the way, not only is He the way to the Father, but Jesus is also the way to a life that has real meaning and purpose. Do you want to live a life that has meaning? You know, there's so many people who are going through life without any real purpose. They don't know why they're here, don't know where they're going, don't know what to do while they're here, and just, their life just has no real meaning or purpose. Friend, Jesus gives you the way to a life that is fulfilling and has a real purpose in this life. Think about the questions of Jesus in Mark chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. Jesus said, For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What's more important than your soul? Absolutely nothing. What could you give one day that would be equal to your soul? What could you trade your soul's most important thing you have? Friend, if that's the case, then that clues me in to my purpose in this life. If my soul is my most important possession, then I need to make sure that I spend my life preparing my soul to live with God forever. The flesh is not what's important. This body, its desires, its passions, its lust, all that one day is going to cease to exist. The world's not the most important thing. It's one day going to be burned up with the fervent heat, 2 Peter 3, verses 9 through 12. Whatever is most important, that ought to be my meaning and purpose in life. And friend, that's my soul, and that's your soul. That's the reason that I'm here is to get my soul, to prepare my soul to live with God for eternity. When you think about a life that has real meaning and purpose, you can kind of look at people in the Bible who maybe tried for purposes and other things, to find meaning in other ways. And Solomon rises to the top in that venture. He tried projects. He tried building things. He tried, you know, passion and lust and desire. He had multiple wives, had multiple projects going. He was always, bu always busy and had his hand in various things. And, and in the book of Ecclesiastes, that's what he tried to do. He tried to search meaning in life. Is it in art? Is it in music? Is it in projects? Is it in the fulfillment of pleasure? Do you know what Solomon figured out? in the end of that book. Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What's the whole purpose of life? Fear God. Keep His commandments. This is the whole duty of man. Why? God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. My purpose and yours in this life is to realize Jesus is the way. Obeying God, living for God, making sure my soul is right with God is the way to a life that has real meaning. In fact, did you know that's why we were created? Isaiah 43 verse 7, God says, Everyone who's called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. The life that has real meaning is a life that glorifies God. Matthew 5 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. If I'm living for Christ, if I'm trying to follow God's teaching and be a good example to the world, then my life does have a lasting meaning and purpose that transcends this old world that one day won't exist anyway. Paul put it this way in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, whether we eat or whether we drink or whatever we do, we do all to the glory of God. That's our purpose in life, and that's the meaning in life, and Jesus gives us that meaning. This is why Paul could say in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Now, friend, you think about that for a moment. What life, what, what type of life, what ideology of life, what way of life, can give you a, a view of the end that says dying is a good thing. 
Not many. There are, there are a lot of people that all they focus on is the here and now. But Paul could say, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's living a life that has a meaning and purpose beyond the here and now. This is why Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. But you know, as you think about Jesus as the way, not only is He the way to the Father, the only way, not is He, the only, the, not is he only the way to have a life that has real meaning and purpose, but Jesus is the way to a life that has forgiveness and peace at the center of it. Listen to the words of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Paul said, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. What type of life can give you forgiveness and peace? Christianity can. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Paul said, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. If I have God's peace in my life, and I know I'm at peace with God, then friend, I can live my life in such a way that I know I'm forgiven, and that I don't have to go around worrying and be anxious about all the things of this life. You see, forgiveness is something that God promises to His children. The Lord has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. Psalm 103, verse 10. Uh, God has forgiven our misdeeds. Psalm 130, verses 4 through 5. He has cast all those away from us. Micah 7, verses 18 and 19. God has forgiven each one of us. If we've obeyed the gospel, our sins have been forgiven. This is what God told the Apostle Paul, Saul at the time. Acts 22, verse 16, Ananias came to Saul and said, Why are you waiting? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Can you imagine the peace that must have come into Saul of Tarsus' life? He held the coats of those who stoned the great martyr Stephen. He was wreaking havoc on the Lord's church at one time. He actually was dragging men and women to be put into prison. Imagine the, the guilt that he must have carried around. But then, when Paul obeyed the gospel, all that was forgiven. Peace and forgiveness became a part of the Apostle Paul's life. And friend, that can be true for you as well. Not only is Jesus the way to salvation, He's also the way to peace and and forgiveness. You want a life that has real peace? You know, peace is a big thing in the world today. People think about peace in a, in a world setting, in a government setting, and we pray for peace, and, and all that's good and well. But the only way true peace can be had is through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Why? He's the Prince of Peace. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. They said, Peace on earth and goodwill toward men when Jesus came into the world. Luke chapter 2, verse 15. If peace is going to be secured, it will only come through the Prince of Peace, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And then as you think about Jesus as that way, let's also realize He's the only way to defeat Satan. Think about all the havoc that Satan has wreaked on humanity and all the havoc he's wreaked in your life and mine. Go back to the garden. Look at that, that beautiful state of euphoria that Adam and Eve were living in. No sin, no problems until Satan entered the picture. Tempted them to eat that forbidden fruit and they ate of it. And, and, and sin and death and consequences occurred. Look at what he did to Adam and Eve. And then look at your life and look at mine. The things we've said, the things we've done, the things we've participated in that weren't right. He's wreaked havoc in our lives very likely as well. How are you going to defeat such a great enemy that is described like a, a, a dragon in Revelation 12, that is described like a roaring lion in 1 Peter 5, 8? How can you defeat him? Only through Jesus the way. Listen to Hebrews 2, verse 14. The Bible says, Inasmuch then as the children have become partakers of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same. Listen to this, that through death 
He might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. And he's going to go on to say and release those who all their lifetime were subject to bondage. Hebrews 2 verses 14 and 15. Jesus is the only way in my life and yours that we can defeat Satan. Jesus through death overcame him, defeated him who had the power of death. And by obedience to the gospel and living the way Christ lived, I also can defeat Satan. Revelation 12, 11 talks about those who overcame the devil. Here's what it said. These are they, and will go on to say, who overcame those who uh, were obedient to the gospel. They overcame him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives unto the death. They had the blood of Christ in their life. They, they didn't love their lives more than they loved Christ, and they gave themselves to the word of their testimony, which we have as the Bible today. And so the good news is, through Jesus as the way, you can get to the Father. You can have forgiveness. You can have a life of peace, and you can overcome Satan and everything that he throws at you. But you've got to be committed to Jesus as the way. Let's then direct our attention to that second statement made by Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. Then He said emphatically, I am the truth. You see, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the very embodiment of truth. He came in human form and brought God's truth to mankind. Do you remember Ephesians 4, verse number 21? The Bible says, if indeed you have heard Him, heard Christ, and have been taught by Him, listen now, as the truth is in Jesus. Jesus is the embodiment of God's truth in human form. He came to bring that truth to mankind. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The Bible goes on to say in John 1 verse 14 that Jesus is that Word. The Word, the Logos, the, the truth of God came through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so what makes Jesus important as the truth? Without Him, there's no way we can know truth. Proverbs 23 verse 23, the proverb writer said, Buy the truth and sell it not. That's how important truth is, whatever it costs us. You need to get a hold of the truth and never give that up. And here's why. Jesus spoke about becoming a disciple of His in John 8, verse 31 and 32. Jesus said, If you continue in My Word, you are My disciples indeed. Now listen to this. And you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. What makes Jesus as the embodiment of truth so important? He's the only way. You can be free from the sin problem and that which, which haunts man. You see, God's Word is truth. John 17, 17, Jesus said, Sanctify them by your truth. Your Word is truth. And so if I'm going to, in a world that says, What is truth? Like Pilate in John 18, 36, it says, What is truth? And kind of scoffs at truth. Friend, you can know Jesus and God's Word are truth. And I need to know truth so that I can be saved. Uh, the truth on salvation is available in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Here's what Hebrews 7, verse number 25 says, Therefore, He is able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through Him, since He always lives to make intercession for them. The truth on the matter of salvation is, Jesus is able to save completely those who come to God through Him. If I will obey Christ, if I will follow Him, and if I will do what He says, then friend, I absolutely can be saved. You know, as you think about John 14, 6, I once heard someone say something very memorable that stuck with me about this verse. Someone said, Jesus is the way. Without Him, there's no going. Jesus is the truth. Without Him, there's no knowing. And Jesus is the life. Without Him, there is no living. How true that is. I cannot get to the Father. I cannot know God. And I cannot live forever without Jesus Christ. And so we think about Jesus as the way. We've thought about Jesus as the embodiment of God's truth. Now let's think about Jesus as the life. 
What does it mean when Jesus says, I am the life? Well, friend, there are multiple ways of living life, but there's only one abundant life, and that's found in Jesus Christ. John 10, verse 10, the Bible says, Jesus speaking, I come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. What makes Jesus the life? He's the abundant life. You cannot have a better life than the life of being a Christian. Why? You have God as your Father. Jesus is our Savior. Every sin and misdeed has been forgiven. We have the peace of God. We have the love of God. We have the blessings of God in our life. You just can't find a more abundant life than the life the Christian lives. But as you think about Jesus as the life, let's also realize Jesus gives us eternal life. When we think about the statement of John 14, 6, let's back up and let's see what prefaced those words. Jesus said to His disciples in John 14, 1, Let not your heart be troubled. Now, He had previously told them, I'm about to die. I'm about to be buried. I'm about to be raised the third day. I'm about to go back to the Father. That would discourage His disciples in the immediate context, knowing that the Savior, who they've been with for these years, is now going to leave them. And so Jesus wanted to offer them comfort. Let not your heart be troubled. Why? You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. Were it not so, I would have told you. And then he said, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus, uh, Thomas goes on to say, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And then Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. As you think about Jesus as the life, friend, it ought to bring every, every Christian, every follower of God, comfort to know that Jesus is the life in the sense that this is not all there is to life. The here and now is the temporary. The here and now, the tangible, the touchable, the feelable, one day that'll be done away with. The Bible says the earth and all that's in it will be burned up with a fervent heat. Matthew 24, verses 34 through 36, Jesus promised that heaven and earth will one day be destroyed. The Word of God, it'll endure forever. And so Jesus gives us life in the sense that this is not all I'm looking for. There is so much more and there's so much greater than what we see in this life. And Jesus promises us we can have eternal life. Matthew 25, 46, the righteous will go away into eternal life. Friend, as you think about living forever, it, it isn't the length of it necessarily that we want to focus on. Well, eternity is eternity, and we understand that. There's a lot more than that to eternal life. Jesus said it this way. He defined eternal life in this way in John 17, 3. Jesus prayed to the Father, this is eternal life. What? that they may know you, the only true and living God. Eternal life is knowing God and being with the true and living God forever. Being in the presence of God. Can you imagine that? When you think about heaven, what makes it great? Being with God forever. Being around the throne of God. Uh, being in the presence of the God who spoke and the world came into existence, the God who exhibited His love by not even holding back His own Son, who gave us the Bible, who sent Jesus to die as a sacrifice, and who has taken care, always taken care of His own. Can you imagine living in a place of wonder like that forever? And so as we think about Jesus as the way to the Father, the way of salvation, we want to encourage you today to think seriously about salvation. Have you thought about your soul? Remember, it's the most important thing you have. Have you thought seriously about, why am I here? What's my life all about? Uh, how long am I going to be here? Where will I spend eternity with God? Friend, let's think about some of those questions today. And the sad fact is, or the reality is, none of us, are going to be here very long. What is your life but a vapor? Appears for a little while, then it vanishes away. James 4, verse 14. I've got, if lucky, 70, maybe 80 years. Psalm 90, verses 10 and 12. On this life, 
Life is short, but friend, with the time we have, we need to make sure that we focus on the right things. Remember the questions of Jesus. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul, or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? If I spend my life in worldly, pleasure-filled ventures, and then in the end, I didn't think about my soul, I will have wasted my life. Your life and mine is about making sure that our soul is in the right shape with God to live for all eternity. And so we ask you today, have you become a Christian? Have you looked to Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life to find salvation? How do you do that? Well, friend, the Bible is very clear. You must realize Jesus is the Son of God. You will call His name Jesus. He'll save His people from their sins. Matthew 1, verse 21. Jesus said, unless you believe that I am He, you'll surely die in your sins. John chapter 8, verse number 24. Do you really believe? Are you committed to the fact? Would you live your life in view of the fact that Jesus is God? He is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. Would you be so committed to that truth that you would change your life? Acts 3 and verse 19, Peter preached, Repent and turn again that your sins may be blotted out. Would you repent and turn from sin and turn to God? Would you confess the name of Jesus before men? Jesus said in Matthew 10, verse 32 and 33, If you won't confess me before men, neither will I confess you before the Father who is in heaven. And friend, would you, to be saved, be baptized? Peter said in 1 Peter 3, 21, Baptism does now also save us. Have you realized and have you put your trust in Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life. Friend, if not, we want you to know today that God loves you and that we love you more than anything. Our prayer for you today is that you will obey the gospel and look to Jesus, the author of eternal salvation. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the Churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, radio, and Internet. Our motto is to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wife. This is the Gospel of Christ. We encourage you to visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials as well as audio and video copies of our lessons. If you would like to have a copy of today's lesson, please visit our website and fill out a media request form or you can email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com. Call us toll free at 1-855-458-3905 or write to us at P.O. Box 788, McMinnville, Tennessee, 37111. This is the Gospel of Christ.